so I can say something about the math, the math wars. All right. Well, we had these, uh, this controversy over math instruction, and it, it made the front page of the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times, and it was also discussed in the Wall Street Journal and Investors Business Daily and various other places. And the war was about how to teach mathematics. And there, there are sort of two big sides here. One side says, throw them in the swimming pool. They will swim. Uh, immerse them in novel, non-routine problems and ask them to use their imagination. They will reinvent for themselves the past several thousand years of mathematics. Every child, his own Archimedes or his own or her own Pythagoras, Euclid, exactly. The opponents call this fuzzy math or constructivist math, which is after a psychological theory of learning, or whole math by uh, analogy to whole language, <coughs> or new, new math to sort of expand on, but also to distinguish it from the new math of the 1960s. And it is a con, it, it, it is uh, problems first. Give them problems, teach them problem solving. And some, if you have children or grandchildren, the way, ways to tell that you have this is they'll learn handheld calculators in homework, in classroom, during examination from kindergarten on. Okay. Emphasis on estimation and guess and check as problem solving strategies. Uh, no coverage of things like long division with multiple digit divisors. Essay writing instead of mathematical symbols as a way to show your work and good grades for imaginative problem solving strategies rather than for getting the right answer. Uh, this was another problem with the class test. When they sent out the sample from the class test in California, they were giving students who wrote uh, imaginative kind of short story like answers, sometimes also because they were politically correct, uh, answers, but hadn't, the mathematics were completely wrong. It's not just that they made one step wrong. The whole approach could not get the right answer. But because they, you know, showed they had a fascinating idea here, uh, you know, from an English essay writing standpoint, they got a higher grade. And even in Palo Alto, which is my school district and is one of the highest performing in the state of California, and yet I think is certainly plagued with a lot of these problems. Uh, I just got an email message from a middle school student who said to me, when I do my homework assignments, I can do the math in five minutes. Then I have to spend an hour uh, writing the uh, explanation of what I did. And uh, when I get, I'm graded, I get one point off if I get the answer wrong. Okay, now that seems, you know, a little bit wrong. Now this may be one point out of five. I'm not saying it's one point out of a hundred, but still, if it's even one point out of five or ten, it's a little bit odd that the, getting the correct answer is not more important than that. Now, it is not the whole thing in math. I mean, it's correct to also care about the procedures, and it's correct to want to teach correct conceptual understanding. But it's not correct, as these people think, that the only way that you can do this is through... Uh, fun activities, guessing how many uh, jelly beans there are in a jar or how many blades of grass are on the football field or whatever it is that they think is going to teach you mathematics. Okay, there is another side, and that is the explicit teaching side. And it says skills and facts first. You would not teach piano or football or golf without learning the rules, memorizing the important facts so they were second nature and using considerable drill and practice. And we do have 25 years of cognitive psychology research that shows that drill and practice is an extremely effective way of learning many things. To teach mathematics, the more explicit teaching side says, you need a teacher who directs or guides instruction, is not merely a facilitator of discussion. The teachers should teach the subject matter. So this is called direct instruction mathematics, explicitly taught mathematics, content-focused mathematics. Its opponents call it traditionalist math or drill and kill math to suggest that it makes children hate math. And surely with a bad teacher, it could. And, and so, so one of the questions here is, 
you know, with a brilliant teacher, there's a lot of different ways to teach math. With a brilliant teacher, you could probably use an, a, a, an immense amount of these uh, new, new math techniques, and that teacher being so good at it could probably carry it off. But what about the average teacher? See, it requires, if you're really going to do this, if you're going to try and do this progressive education way, it requires knowing a lot more. So uh, you'd think that research could solve this, but we don't have a lot of good research uh, in the field of instructional practices. Let me just uh, conclude there and let my uh, colleagues speak. Uh, we, we do have some, uh, let me just say one thing about what we do have. We do have a University of Lancaster study done in the 70s. We do have project follow through that was done in the 1970s. And these showed that explicit teaching uh, generally worked better than the fun, hands-on approach used exclusively. Uh, the people that favor progressive education just dismiss these. Uh, there are problems in education because it's a field with human subjects and because it's expensive and labor intensive. But considering the billions of dollars that get spent over the years on this, it's amazing how little is known about what constitutes effective practices and how many crazy fads get adopted for millions of students.